What's going on guys? How are we doing today? Beanie, long sleeve, we're inside. I know, it's weird. Don't worry about it. Let's get into the gaming stuff. So, I'm going to talk today very quickly about why I think most of the industry has Web3 gaming wrong. Or why NFT gaming or crypto gaming, whatever you want to call it, isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Um, and really, the way, and pretty much tell you guys the way I think we should be looking at it. So currently, if you join a lot of these Twitter spaces, if you join a lot of these different kind of crypto groups or even, you know, discords where people are making these different crypto games, uh, something you'll notice is that a lot of them are trying to adopt very specific models. There's play to earn, there's, um, there's some other models out there. A play to earn is the most popular one where you play the game and, and you know, with the main goal to earn some money, right? Um, and the problem with these types of games and <clears throat> even a lot of other ones that may not even be tout themselves as play to earn is the fact that like, you know, you have teams building these games and by the way, this is no knock to any of those teams or anyone in, in the ecosystem specifically, but in, for a lot of these games, you have people that are crypto devs or like maybe people that are new to both crypto and gaming, right? <clears throat> so they make the mistake by putting crypto first versus putting the game first. Okay, what I mean by that is like, yes, connecting your game to the blockchain, uh, assuming you want some sort of crypto integration, uh, it's, it's an important thing, right? Uh, and obviously, depending on the game that you're doing, uh, you can do that in many different ways. You can have the in-game currency be an ERC-20, you can have different items within the game be ERC-721s or ERC-1155s, um, and, you know, you can go, I'm sure, further beyond that, um, you know, depending on, what, depending on the plan that you have. Uh, the problem, however, is that <clears throat> games are putting the crypto element first and not the game first. First and foremost, let's be clear, whether you're a crypto game, NFT game, regular game, it's got to be fun, okay? If the game's got to be fun. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, <clears throat> there are a lot of games that come out um, that, in all honesty, not fun. I mean, like, you know, and, and, and I guess these are more of the games, and again, I love all these different projects, to be clear. This is just me being critical, as usual. Um, there will be projects that come out and call themselves games, but in reality, all they really are are kind of stake to earns. That's another, I guess that's another model, right? Um, which is no problem with that, by the way. You know, like, Toad's Duels, uh, Lost Donkeys, Bridge World, uh, all these different, the very least, Arbitrum-based stake to earn games. Um, like, I use them, frankly, almost on a daily basis, actually. Um, so there's nothing wrong with them. The problem is that, like, you're not onboarding the masses through any of these games, in my opinion. Uh, the way you onboard the masses is, and the way you make a good crypto game is, you make a good game, really. Uh, you, you put the game first, and then you follow up with some crypto integrations, Web3 integrations. And I think the, the part of the reason why I want to make this video is because, I guess I would have thought this was a little more obvious to most, to most people, but I guess it's not. And I think it's just a general disclaimer for any, any project building. At the end of the day, like, yes, you're building a game, maybe you're, maybe you're an artist, maybe you're doing something else, but you're, you're a business at the end of the day, right? You need to make something that's sustainable and people that will adopt, and something that people will adopt, right? So I think looking at it from that lens, you know, believe it or not, I think with crypto gaming, the best way to go about it is look at, look at the progression general gaming has taken over the past couple of years. And to be honest with you, the most obvious one where crypto could work really, really good um, and I'll show you an example soon of what has been working really good that's kind of adopted this model are free-to-play games. Games that are initially free-to-play for everybody. Um, games, and, I'll, and we're, we're, I'm going to say it, uh, Fortnite, for example, that led this charge of being a free-to-play to, free to, free to play game um, and really pretty much onboarding like the masses. I mean, Fortnite was like, like one of the biggest things when it came out, right? Um, and the fact that it was free, it was cross-platform, so you could play with any of your friends, whether you're on PC or PlayStation, that was huge, um, but guess what, Fortnite still ended up making a fortune, fortune, not by selling the game, because it was free, but by selling skins and cosmetics, stuff like that, and this is where you can kind of see the blockchain coming into play, um, <clears throat> I'm going to take an example here, um, one game that's been doing this very, very well, and honestly has surpassed every metric by any means of a crypto game, uh, is The Beacon, um, if you're not familiar with the Arbitrum ecosystem, then you probably haven't heard of it yet, but if you are, then you know what we're talking about. Uh, it's essentially this MMORPG, I guess I'll call it a dungeon crawler game, uh, where essentially you can either play for free um, and you can run through like the, uh, these different daily dungeons that change up every day, um, kill a bunch of monsters, and 
make your way to the end of the, the make your way to the end of the dungeon, um, and get some prizes, right? Uh, however, if you do buy a founding character, which currently is forty bucks per character, which gives you access to a dungeon once per day, uh, you have the the ability to get these prizes that you can essentially turn into NFTs. Um, the, the prizes initially are just in game, but they have like a function where you can kind of transfer it back and forth. Um, and mind you, there are prizes ranging up to the most common stuff to the most rare stuff. Uh, now, something to keep in mind about this game is that this game literally only launched two and a half weeks ago now, um, and this is their prototype. And they've done over $1.6 million in sales in a bear market on a layer two chain, Arbitrum, obviously. Um, so this is what I mean when I say, like, this is the true power of a really, really good game that utilize the the power of the blockchain. This small indie company, these these guys pretty much, they did not expect anywhere near this type of like hype, right? And frankly, if they use another platform, another system, then you know, chances are they wouldn't have gotten as much money as they did from this game. I mean, they they literally got 1.6 million like flat at the very least because that's how much because there were there were already 40,000 mints. So you, you multiply that by 40 bucks, I mean, insane. So point be, point being said, and I kind of just want to end off here is, um, you know, crypto gaming, um, as, you know, while, while I do think we're, we're, we're headed towards the right direction as an industry, and the Beacon obviously is doing an amazing job leading that, um, it's just something you got to think about. Like, if you're making your game, and you need some, like, and obviously every game is different, but, like, a game like this, where really, I'll be honest with you, all you're doing is connecting your wallet to it, just to sign, just you're signing your wallet to sign in, um, and then the only transactions you're making after that is if you're moving stuff on and off the blockchain in terms of NFTs. Maybe that's all you need. You don't need every transaction to be a blockchain. Uh, every transaction to be, a, you know, um, what's it called? Like, like an action in game. You know. Uh, anyways, that's my little rant for the day. Um, I'm gonna go get my Starbucks cold brew. Um, burning a hole in my pocket over here. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you think. Do you think <coughs> Web3 gaming is not all that it's cracked up to be? Am I a moron? Let me know your opinions in the, in the comments down below. See you guys in the next one. Peace.